everybody. This is Robin Hyatt. I am doing some more painting today. Actually, I'm doing a painting of a woman who is getting married. I don't know if you can see. Let me turn this away. And you will see that it is just kind of a fantasy. You're going to see the Mormon Salt Lake Temple I'm going to work on in the background. Um, and there will be a female in the front in her wedding dress. This is someone that I work with. She's a nurse. And she is getting married in the temple, not the Salt Lake, but in the temple. And um, that's just how much I appreciate her and think of her that I am painting an LDS picture for her, which is very important for her. So we are going to work on that. I'm going to have a little dog in the background that wants to eat something. And I'm going to work on brightening this up because I did a white wash here. Um, I was going to do the whole background white wash it and fade the temple in the back. Uh, but I decided to put a path here. I'm going to do cobblestone with green grass going between it. Um, her dress will be white uh, with some lace on it. That's why I did it a little bit darker because I'm going to be painting lace on it. Um, she has sleeves because in the Mormon temple, you will um, have to have sleeves. You have to have a very modest dress code for your, your wedding dress. And if you have any cutouts like in here, you have, like what I had to do is I had to put applique in here. And I had um, sheer sleeves and I had to put applique to make it look like short sleeves. So and then um, at my, um, so in the Mormon ceremony, I had to have the appliques put in to cover up any skin. And then on the reception, um, which was in my backyard with um, lilacs, I took those appliques out. So the dress looked really cool. Um, so that's just the way it is in the Mormon land. So today I'm going to talk about, and I, this might drown it out just a bit. I just need a little bit of light on there. Sorry, guys. Um, I am going to talk about people of the Mormon church. Because as I talk about the church, I'm just telling you my point of view. I'm telling you my stories and I have um, some speech or some text to speech um, audio um, application. And so the book that I've written on some of these, I'm just going to play some of that of people's stories because they're very, very interesting. So I'm going to try to turn that where you can kind of see what I'm doing. I wonder if I can. No, oh, I could do that without the light. I think it's okay. So I work with actually a lot of LDS people and um, and some of my bosses are LDS people. So I have to be very scrupulous in my, my speech. A lot of times I don't bring anything up unless it's to some buddy that's not Mormon. Um, and usually it's, you know, I'm kind of over bashing the church. And when I say bashing the church, I'm not bashing the people, even though they they are a high connection to the church. I'm bashing above them. I'm bashing the history. Um, and I'm really not bashing it. I'm just coming forth and telling about it. So uh, let's see. I want something else here. So with... I, when you're Mormon, it's hard to differentiate because the history, the Book of Mormon, Joseph Smith, is all a part of your psyche. And so when someone says something bad about your church, they're saying it bad about you. And um, Mormons haven't understood that yet, which is understandable because I would have thought the same way if I was Mormon. I would have taken everything very, very personally because it was personal to me. And a lot of it was where if you said anything negative about even Joseph Smith, that it highly offended me because he was someone that I worshipped and revered. 
And I had to because that's how I was raised. And it was in my whole body, his words, his mischief, and I call polygamy mischief. That was mischief. Uh, isn't it funny how people, mostly men, maybe some women, that when they get popular, they get a following, they turn corrupt. And so I don't know if that's something that he planned to do all along or if it's something that just hit him that he wanted to have many wives because I believe he was very sexually motivated and don't quote me on this but I do believe in this Salt Lake Temple some well not the Salt Lake Temple uh, what was the temple Nauvoo there's probably some chambers there that might have had some dirty deeds I know in this temple Salt Lake Temple at the very beginning when they do Washington anointings, if you haven't heard about Washington anointings, it's when you become a, uh, a well, you're a member, but you um, are either going on a mission or you are getting married and you wear your temple garments, so you're sealed. Um, or you're going on a mission. So... When you go through the ceremony, it's your first ceremony because you have to have your garments before anything else, before you can get married or anything else. Um, and basically you're naked in the temple with a sheet over you. You have no clothes on except that sheet, which is open on the side and then <clears throat> has a hole on the top for you to put through over your head. And then you just hold the sides because there's women that have to um, touch you in certain areas. And I think, I don't know if I covered that. It's in my book. I don't know if I've covered it on video here, but um, I never, women hated to go have that done. And every time I went to the temple, I got called to do it. Um, I didn't hate it. It was weird to me. Um, I did take it as a kind of a very spiritual thing uh, when I had it done because the words were very wonderful and they're not true, but it's, it was just wonderful that I could serve somebody um, in that capacity because everything you do from then on after you get your own is um, for the dead, for dead people. You get a name and you go through all the ceremonies as if you are that person, which I thought was kind of fabulous at the time because I'm a person that just likes to serve no matter if I was Mormon or not. I just like to serve people and I want to serve them. And, um, even now I want to serve and I find great joy in that. And I find great joy in helping others. And just as you're listening to this, if you're LDS or former LDS, that you will come to an understanding um, or I call it an awakening. There's so many people in this world that has awakenings and uh, in all different areas of their life, awakening of self, awakening of church and state, awakening, awakening out of Mormonism, which is pretty, it's pretty beautiful. Once you start having that awakening, it's way hard to go back. Is you your eyes are open and so what do you do now now that you know something's wrong here something's wrong and so you need to find out what's wrong and then when you find out what's wrong is your church you've been lied to and it's really not true and it can't be true what do you do what do you do that's a hard one it's almost like those people that don't know, it's almost like a divorcement. It's like when you get a divorce, when you, like, let's say this. Let's say Joseph Smith. So, because that's really who I came down on when I found out that 
in that the church wasn't true um, in my heart and soul that I came down on Joseph Smith, man. I was furious with him. How could you do this? How could you fool all those people that serve and give and believe? And none of it's true. And man, did I come down hard on him because he was instigator of this whole thing. And I saying, you know, hail to the prophet. How many times in my life did I sing hail to the prophet? And you want to know what? I don't believe I ever said saying hail to Justice or um, Jesus Christ. Did I ever sing hail to Jesus Christ? No, I sang hail to Prophet Joseph Smith because the Prophet Joseph Smith thought he was better than Jesus Christ. He really, I feel that was part of his downfall and demise. Um, you could probably argue with me. But he was becoming very pompous. And uh, he, before he died, I don't know if it, if it was in the same year, he um, said that there was really no greater than him. Um, I have it in my book, it's an exact quote. Um, and it's just so not true. And he said he was, his followers stayed with him better than even Christ's followers did. And how pompous is that? I mean, boy, you don't say something like that and live to tell the tale, which he didn't live much longer, I believe, after he said not. And he was becoming a little bit, a little bit out there because he also ran for president of the United States. I don't know if you knew that. Um, I don't know if a lot of people also know that he had a militia, an army, uh, from Nauvoo, Nauvoo Legion. And he even had a outfit that he wore <clears throat> to pretend like he was a military man. Um, he was playing out all his fantasies. He was playing out totally all his fantasies. And he got away with a lot of stuff because he could, but he didn't last very long. He didn't last very long in those fantasies. Um, it came down on him. His time was up. You can't live a life like that. And it came up. So what I wanted to really talk about was the vibration of religious people. And I don't know why I enjoy being around Mormon people more than just everyday people. Um, and I thought, why is that? If I'm at a party, I will hone in on the Mormon and I will hang with them. And I don't know if it's because I can relate to them or I know they're not drinking because you can still <clears throat> not, I mean, I drink a little bit, but I don't really, I'm not a real partier, never have been never cared to be because it's just not me. I just don't find substance in that um, for that night of fun and then wake up, wake up and have a heart, horrible time. So I kind of, you know, when I go to work parties, I hang out with the Mormons and I thought that's so funny of me because I feel comfortable with them. And I really thought why do I do that? And I think I found out my answer. And my answer was because their vibration is raised. And it's not just Mormon, it's Christians too. When you pray to a God and you pray, it raises your vibration. When you try to live a good life, whatever structure of religion it is, I believe it raises your vibration because it it you're hanging in a high vibration. You're not um, in crime. You're not doing drugs. You're not an alcoholic, which lowers your vibration. 
you are doing something in your mind that's positive, goal oriented, spiritual oriented. Uh, you have a goal you want to attain to go to the highest kingdom of God, um, which, you know, think about it. Would you rather have that or someone that steals, robs, lies, um, drug addict, alcoholic? I mean, problematic people. And, but problematic people can get out, can rise above. Like everybody can raise their vibration. What's really sad is substance lowers your vibration. And it's really hard to get out of that. Once you've lowered your vibration and you have that control of a substance, it's really a tough one. And um, I feel sorry for people that have addictions because. I think it just makes your life twice as hard and it makes it hard to get out of. And I don't think you're happy, but I also know a lot of LDS women that aren't happy that when I moved to Utah, it was the highest Prozac nation ever in the whole United States, which was shocking to me. And I actually met some not very nice Mormons too. I have to do, I do have to say that. Um, it's happy Valley, but if you're an outsider, even if you're Mormon coming in, it's, it's a tough, it's a tough one. And so that's why I like to hang at BYU um, wards because everybody was an outsider there. They all came from a different place. And um, I felt a little bit more at home with there and everybody was kind of like me even though i was a little bit older they were same goal orientation i did talk one time when i lived got out of this church i did talk to a guy that had been in the church he was older and uh he had said plainly I've been in the church all my life. My family is all in the church. My grandchildren are all in the church. Everyone's in the church. And when I had my awakening like you had, Robin, I couldn't do anything about it because my family is here. And that would crush me to lose my family. I can't lose my family. So I stayed. I just pushed all those feelings down and I stayed. Even though I know every Sunday I go, it's not true. But I act like it is. Pretty strong, huh? Pretty strong, pretty sad. I don't know if Jesus Christ and God meant for that to be. Do you think they meant for that to be? I don't think so. I don't think they wanted you to be in something that you felt lowered, lowered you. Um, but you had to do it out of social... Uh, what am I trying to say? Social... Your family. Your family will... Will uh, never see you again. If you leave the church, it's either my way or the highway in the Mormon church. My way or the highway. <clears throat> That's all it is about. So either you do it or you don't. And if you don't, you're out. Even if your whole family's in. And then if you're gay, then you're way in trouble. Yeah. The Mormon church is trying to profess that they're supporting gays, but it's a, a smoke screen like most of it. I think if you get really deep down into it, they don't. And I'm just wondering, in the Mormon church, really, that hierarchy, the, all of those men, the men's club, can't tell me that they're all top-notch 
and are living their lives clean. You can't tell me that. And you got people, men, that are in a hierarchy, have control of millions and millions of people. You can't tell me that they're clean. It's just, I think that would be the downfall of the church if it came out that some of those guys are not clean. When I say not clean, that they do something that's against the rules of the church. And everybody's human. There's always forgiveness. But they have a hard time forgiving their members. They put them through the ringer and they have a fall, which is really sad. And I've been there. I've never been excommunicated. I think just had that six months because of not paying tithing. I never did anything wrong when I was a member of the church. And if I decided I wanted to do, have a more free life, I wanted out of the church. I wanted my name off the records because I said, I'm in control here and you're not going to excommunicate me for anything. So I'll, if I want to do the something which in your eyes is wrong, then I will leave before I do that. Kind of like just a divorcement. You really wouldn't cheat on your, your spouse, would you, before your divorce is final? Wouldn't you like wait out of respect? I would. So anyway, I just wanted to talk about people and in all religions, how they raise their vibration. And you always raise your vibration when you pray to God. I don't care who you are, what religion, Muhammad, um, Buddha, whatever you do to bring your life to a higher vibration, none of that can be bad. None of that can be bad. So you can't really dog other churches because those people are doing what they think is right, what they think feels right, and they're not. I don't know if you could say hurting society. You might be slightly hurting some society with your actions, but I'm kind of over Mormonism, but I want to talk about it and tell stories about it. And I want people to share their stories. Some people have done that. And um, I like that. I think that's really cool because there's still people out there that are confused and wandering. And if they can come and I guess what I'm trying to portray is that you don't have to live your life anything different. You've got to go through the steps when leaving the church. Think of it as a divorce. You're going to be mad. You're going to be pissed off. But don't don't rebel. That's the worst thing you can do is start drinking, start messing around with people. Then that doesn't make you happy. That's not going to make you happy. You might be happy for a few moments until something happens that, could be catastrophic. You could lose your kids. You can, you know, but live your life as you want. You can still live your life and just think of living your life, loving God and Christ. And if you can just focus on them, when you leave the church, the answers, ask for the answers to come to you. Ask God to continue to love you in all aspects. That's what I had a hard time with is I thought God would not love me anymore or respect me if I left the Mormon church. Because what if it was true, but I just couldn't do it anymore. I just couldn't do it anymore, you guys. So prayer will get you through leaving Mormonism because you're in Mormonism because you like to worship. 
you just realized you're worshiping the wrong thing. So now look for the right thing that's right for you. If a church is not right for you, I challenge you to go to several. If they're not right for you, um, go to classes like I did at a church. I didn't attend the Vineyard Church for a while. I just went to their Leaving Mormonism Behind kind of classes. Um, and I just went to the class of understanding what their church means because I realized when I left the Mormon church, I had no idea what Christianity was. I had, I thought I knew, I professed that I knew because I was told that I was, and I believed in Christ all the way through being Mormon. So I believed I was a Christian because I believed in Christ. Um, but then I was taught from the scriptures and I, my mouth fell open and they were so open. And I remember going to the vineyard and the guy that was teaching the um, pastor, I think it was a different one than pastor Trevor. Um, this pastor had people stand up that wanted people to pray over them. And I didn't quite understand what that was because I don't know. So I'm sitting in my chair and there's this guy that stood up by me and he had tattoos all over and he stood up and kind of scruffy and he had his head down and he just stood there and immediately, I'm going to cry saying this, but immediately I would say no more than a dozen people rose out of their chairs, came to his side. They touched him either on the shoulder or if they couldn't touch him because there's so many people around him, they touched the person that's in front of him or them. And so they laid hands on him and they prayed. I can hear all of them praying for this man. Oh, I'm going to cry. And I thought my mouth fell open. I have never seen such a miracle as that. I've never seen so many people not judge this man. If this man came into a Mormon church in jeans, t-shirt, tattoos, long hair, wow, everybody would be staring at him. They'd be talking to him. They'd be going, oh, who's this guy? Are we going to get shot up? Um, and I've been there through that. I've been there when people have come to church with jeans on. And they were the talk of the ward that day because they had their jeans on. And this man, I just thought and felt, because I was so close to them, that's the Jesus. That's what it's all about. That is what my search, my questioning, my wanting to know Jesus. I saw it right in front of me by these people. And that will affect me my whole life. And do you think I could stand? No, because I was scared and I'm still scared to have people pray over me. I don't know why. Um, but that was the most beautiful thing I had ever seen in my whole religious life. That one moment that they prayed over that man. And it was really interesting because I talk about energy and the energy that permeated because they all were connecting. They touched him on the shoulder, the arm, whatever they could touch. And then if they couldn't get in to touch him, they would touch the person in front of them. And so the energy was connected to flow to him. And I bet you that affected that man, that young man. And through his tears, he was crying terribly. No matter what you've done, no matter how hard you live your life, Jesus loves you. He does. He will always love you. Because you are his. Nothing you've done cannot lead you back to him.
because all you have to do is ask. All you have to do is ask. And that's why for this young woman who's getting married in the temple, and this is cream, but it's going to be white um, because she has a lot of lace on her dress. So I will be trying to paint lace cobblestone. I'll have green grass between the cobblestones that will lead to the temple. And I have a couple of bunny rabbits I'll paint here. Um, I'm going to have some butterflies. She's going to don't look at this as a really rough draft. So it'll be very per perfect, more perfected, uh, perfected. Um, and then I'm going to have her hand down here with her bouquet. This is a cape because she's getting married in December that her, this is, this is going to be kind of a joke because her soon to be mother-in-law and soon to be sister-in-law wanted her to wear a cape for pictures outside because it'll be winter and it'll be cold. And, um, she talked to me about it. She was like, I don't want to wear a cape. They want me to wear this like fur white cape. And so she's not going to do it, but this will be funny because I'm doing this for, for them that she will be wearing a white fur cape in this picture <laughs> of her. And you're probably wondering, where's the guy in here? Well, I don't know him and I really haven't studied his look very well. So this is just going to be about her and um, the beautifulness of the aspect of her life and um, the road to what she believes in. And she's a beautiful person. She's a good person. And I do really appreciate LDS people. Um, they sure would be great Christians if they could come to Christ and come out of this faith. Uh, that's very structured and it's very, um, it can be very problematic for a person and, and um, because they're expected to do so much, be so much and be perfect where even though their prophet was none of those things at towards the end, he couldn't follow the rules of his own church. And that is telling, um, I was starting to share you something with you. I was looking at some old photos of the Salt Lake Temple inside when they were doing the endowment session. And so, of course, you're naked. But in the olden days, you were actually naked. Um, men would do the session over men and women would do session over women um, because you're naked. And they had a bathtub. And then they had a chair by the bathtub with steps on it. So the the officiator was still in the chair and you're standing in the bathtub. I believe you're standing in the bathtub because they're anointing you with oils and water. And, um, and I do believe they said that you were completely naked when they did that. Who wrote that rule? <laughs> Who wrote that rule? So there was a time where people were completely naked in the time of the temple. Um, and don't let people tell you different because I have pictures. I'll have to post those pictures of the actual bathtub, the officiator, and that you stand there naked. And not only till it came out later, uh, were you clothed? So it's the craziest, craziest religion ever. And it is such a Omega church and That's, yeah, what, there will be no folly in this church. This, I don't, I always thought this church is going to have a downfall. The only way it would have a downfall if some of the um, 70s, well, actually, no, if there was ever thing, anything that ever came out of molestations and stuff of the hierarchy. And I don't think that would ever happen because they have such a stronghold of police. Um or protection, lawyers, all that. So just come to an understanding if you're LDS and you're wanting to leave, uh, follow your heart and just continue praying to God. He will be with you. He will lead you. He will guide you. He will love you because when you leave, you will have a stronger connection to God and Jesus Christ because you're 
full force leaning just on them. You have no rules. You have no regulations. You are just leaning on God and Jesus Christ, and you're walking hand in hand on the path. There's no other uh, rules or regulations. It's just the two of you walking on your path, finding your way. So I'm going to stop there. What do you guys think? I'm getting the temple a little bit better. Um, I'm going to work a little bit on the background. We're going to work on the path. And you guys, peace out. Love you. Thanks for watching this channel, Mormonism and Art, as I just have conversations with you. If you have any questions of anything you want to know or have me cover or anything about my life in Mormonism, I was in it since um, seven years old. And I got out, uh, I believe, in my late 30s. Um, I started having my awakening, but it took me several years to get out. So peace out, you guys. Love you. Love the world. <laughs> the world needs it. If you ever have, can pray about anything, just pray for uh, a blanket of peace across this world because we need it. We always need it. We have so, so many troublemakers in the top um and political part of this world that all around the world that we need to pray for peace. And I think it's going to be our responsibility, all of us that do pray that we need to pray for world peace because um, it's our responsibility to kind of keep those troublemakers um, controlled. And I think only God can control them and situations. And you guys, peace out. Love you. Have a great day.